What's up guys? Today we're going to be installing a clutch in the Z. Um, so ever since we've done the NA2T swap last year, um, it's actually been slipping and so I haven't, able to, haven't been able to feel the full effect of the turbo. Um, so we're going to go ahead and upgrade this clutch and the one we're going to be using is uh, made for a 350Z. I'll show you in a little bit and I'll put a link in the description for it. Um, but it's actually reasonably priced. I think it was around $350 um, and it actually holds, I want to say, over 400 foot-pounds of torque and over 400 horsepower power um, although horsepower isn't usually what you measure torque or what you measure clutches in um, but it just does list it for some reason but that is a great number um, it is a lot cheaper than like a south bend clutch which is a very respectable clutch still um, but they usually go for around five hundred dollars plus for that uh, power range um, so i'm super excited that we have this and it is still a sprung street clutch so it shouldn't be too rough on us um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, put that in today you can see the z is already up off the ground uh, hopefully you can see it is quite a far distance up and uh, we're gonna go ahead and start with removing the exhaust um, now I don't have a stock turbo exhaust um, if you guys know I went ahead and got a custom one um, so it's gonna be a little bit different but basically you're just gonna unbolt where the downpipe is um, and then you're gonna unbolt um, if you have a stock exhaust where the catalytic converter is um, I have just a little bit past the catalytic converter so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off real quick and then we'll get into the next part all right guys, if you can see we have the entire exhaust piece out right here. Um, this is the custom one that I got made uh, when I did the turbo first. So this actually goes from a 2.5 V-band output um, into a three inch um, stainless steel exhaust. And then it goes through the uh, three inch MSA muffler as well, um, which I hope you guys saw in my video when I did the exhaust. Um, but one thing I forgot to mention is WD-40 will make your life so much easier. Um, so especially if you have stock parts, um, the cast iron gets really rusty, so definitely use uh, some WD-40 or penetrant fluid of some sort. I used mine um, on the end down there where it kind of slips on like a sleeve, and it helped a bunch. So um, definitely do that. So let's go ahead and hop under there. We need to remove a heat shield, and then we'll go ahead and take off the e-brake. Um, and then we can get the uh, drive shaft out. All right, hopefully you guys can see everything okay. We have our transmission up here, if you can see, um, coming back. And then it might be a little bit difficult for you guys to see. We have this heat shield right here. This is typically where your catalytic converter goes because uh, the cat does typically get pretty warm. Um, so there's a heat shield. It's just six 10 millimeters through on each side. Um, take this off, and then we're gonna go ahead and come down over here. And right here is our little junction for the e-brake. Um, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is just loosen this part right here, uh, right there if you guys can see, um, and we'll just loosen, uh, I forget which one it is, but you should be able to spin, I think you spin this bracket. Um, you leave this lock nut and then you spin the bracket um, and then you'll actually eventually be able to pull off this. We only need to do one side, we don't have to do both of them. Um, but then we can go ahead and pull our drive shaft off. We do have a little bit of exhaust left in the way, but it shouldn't be a problem. We should have plenty of room to get over to the side. Um, we should be able to slip it back um, and then out. But we might have to drop this sway bar. If we do, I'll go ahead and let you know. But I'm going to go ahead, pull this heat shield, and then we'll work on that e-brake cable. All right guys, so I actually did go ahead and remove that final exhaust piece uh, just to make it kind of easier for this drive shaft to get out when we do get it. Um, but as you can see, I have two wrenches in it. Um, that one on top is in the U-joint, um, and that's kind of wedging it to keep it still. And then the one on the bottom is actually undoing the nut. Um, so this is going to be kind of how I'm just going to do it. I believe you could have someone, like, I don't think the E-brake would actually do anything. I think the open differential would just spin. Um, but there, you could always have someone just, like, grab the actual drive shaft and hold it or you could put in a like a screwdriver a really long one up here and do the same thing um, but I think this is how it's gonna work it's gonna be pretty easy they weren't on too tight um, granted I did put them on myself <laughs> and uh, I was probably using an open-end wrench like this um, and I didn't want to round off any corners so but I don't think they need to be too tight uh, I'll see if I can find a, a diagram or a, a torque spec for these and I'll put it on the screen if I can find it um, but yeah, so go ahead and we're going to take all four of these off and then what we need to do is actually move the drive shaft upwards to the side and we pull it backwards and then that's going to slip it out of the yoke under here and then we'll be able to drop this down and then pull it all the way out. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Alright guys, we're making great progress. Uh, so you can see I got the drive shaft out. What I had to do is I shifted it, um, actually real quick because there's one other thing. So if you can see the bolt 
on the pinion, I don't know if you can see, um, it sticks out further than the flange itself, um, so it doesn't actually just kind of slide upwards and get off. So what you have to do is you have to kind of get the lip, because there's a circle that goes into here. You have to get that up over this, and then I took a really, really big flat blade, this guy here, and I stuck it in here and I pried it. And basically what you have to do is you have to get the U-joint flange to kind of tilt far enough forward in order to clear this. And then I just hit it really hard so that it got upwards over this before it got a, a time to catch. Um, and then once I did that, I was able to get it over to the side. I wasn't able to just slide it out and then back down. I think I did this the same thing uh, when I was trying to do the uh, initial transmission swap and uh, I didn't have any luck with that so I did have to unbolt um, two 14 millimeter bolts here, two 14 millimeter bolts here on this sway bar and then I was able to just pull everything down, the sway bar down and I was able to get it out and you can see I pulled it out of the transmission. I put some paper towels in here. I already drained the transmission as well just because you can see I got a drain pan right there um, and then I put a paper towel over the uh, the actual yoke on the drive shaft as well. So now we're making really good progress. What we're gonna go ahead and do is we're actually gonna disassemble a little bit of the interior just to get this kind of cleaned up and ready to go. And then all we have to do is disassemble the speedometer pinion. Very easy, you just undo that. Um, and then we got four bolts here on the cross member and then I believe eight bolts on the bell housing uh, plus Sorry, you guys probably couldn't see any of that as out of focus. Uh, plus the uh, slave cylinder right here. We don't have to bleed the system or anything um, because uh, we can just unbolt the slave cylinder and it comes right off. Um, and then we're also going to undo the starter um, as well just to make sure um, that we get that out of the way properly because it does actually bolt to the bell housing if I remember correctly. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work on unbolting all of this stuff that just pretty much unbolts. Um, and we'll go ahead and hopefully get this thing out very soon. Alright, you can see we got the starter out right here. Um, it is just two bolts, one on top, one on bottom, and they're coming from uh, the rear side, so where the uh, transmission goes. Um, they're on that side because this is where the engine is basically. Um, these were 17 millimeter for me, but I'm pretty sure I replaced these bolts when I did the transmission swap because I need the longer ones um, for the new bell housing. Um, so they might be smaller for you, like uh, 16 or 14 is a very common bell housing bolt size. And then uh, right here, you only take off the post that, so let me show you. Ugh, sorry, this is all dirty. So there's one post that goes to the starter kind of like this. You leave that one on. You take this one off right here. This was a 13 millimeter for me. Um, and then this little tab comes off too. You just pull it straight off. Um, and then that should disconnect the entire thing. And then you can take out those two. And it'll come right down. Now let's go ahead and get under here real quick. And I'll show you what we're going to go ahead and do next. Alright, you can see I also got the slave cylinder off right here. It is nice and free. Um, I went ahead and unplugged the reverse switch. You may or may not have this. Actually, you should have a reverse switch on your transmission. Um, if you have a, I want to say a 30A, you also have a neutral switch. Um, so that's something to just look out for. Just look for any electronics, usually on the passenger side. Um, I don't think there's any on the driver's side. Um, and then we have a bracket up here. Um, this is part of the bell housing, so when we take off these bolts, it'll come off. And then I think that is pretty much it, other than the stuff back there with the speedos. So what we're going to go ahead and do is start undoing these bell housing bolts. So this guy right here, up there, um, I believe there's four on each side. And then the starter actually counts for a couple. So you got those two. And then up there, you can see that one. And then there should be two at the very top. I'll see if I can show you guys. All right, so here we are in the engine bay, and if we zoom in right down there, you can see that bolt right there. There's one on this side, and then one on the other side. Um, those are the two very top bell housing bolts. So we're actually gonna go ahead and undo those ones first, because they're, um, I don't wanna say they're the hardest ones to get to, but they're a little difficult just because of their position. Um, and then we're gonna go downwards, and then once we get towards the bottom, because we have the uh, cross member mount still in here in the center, um, we're gonna go ahead and just uh, undo all of them except for like one or two on the bottom of the bell housing bolts. And then we're going to put our transmission jack, um, and I got this, you don't have to necessarily use a transmission jack, but I have one, so I'm gonna use it. Um, and then we're gonna put it under there, and then we'll take off the bell housing bolts and the uh, rear support bolts. And then the whole thing should be able to slide backwards and drop down. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and hopefully we have some success. 
Alright guys, if you can see, I have the transmission right there on the transmission jack. Um, it came out pretty easily. Um, what I had to do is kind of use the transmission jack to kind of tilt it backwards to get the shifter out. Um, you can always just take the shifter off if you really want, but I don't want to. Um, and then we can just kind of slid it backwards and then let it down. Currently, it is too tall if it's on the jack. Um, so I'm going to have to go ahead and just kind of shimmy it off. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and just kind of pull it out. Shouldn't be too big of a problem. Uh, but you can see we have it out. So now we can go ahead and uh, work on our clutch now. All right, guys, here we have our brand new clutch kit. Uh, I did check it is from Concept Z Performance. I'll go ahead and put a link to it um, as well as a part number um, so you guys can find this one. This one specifically is 450 foot-pounds of torque and 425 horsepower. Although we talked about horsepower doesn't really matter too much in terms of... Uh, in terms of clutches, but we do have it now. This is an organic Kevlar clutch, um, so it should be very nice to drive still. So you can see it comes with a brand new throwout bearing. Um, this is just a standard one. I think you can upgrade to a Koyo for like an extra 40 bucks or something. Uh, that one's just with that one. It comes with a clutch alignment tool as well as a new pilot bearing, uh, if you can see that on there. And then, of course, a new pressure plate. So what we're going to go ahead and do is hop under the car and remove the old one real quick. Um, it should just be, I think, six bolts along the outside. And then it should come off. Um, the pressure plate and the clutch will come out. All right, guys, so here we are with the old clutch. I went ahead, and these are 10 millimeter bolts, actually. I believe these are ARP that I have, uh, but those ones might be Nissan. Um, and then flywheel or ARP. One of the ones I got were ARP, um, but it doesn't really matter too much. They should be 10 mils regardless. Um, and then I also put the clutch alignment tool in here. This is going to hold the clutch disc on when we take off this pressure plate um, so the clutch disc doesn't fall. Um, it'll just kind of hold it to the flywheel. Um, so let's go ahead and remove. You can see the six, one, two, three, four, five, and six, um, and then we should be good. Alright guys, if you go ahead and do replace your rear main seal, you're going to go ahead and put the flywheel back on. Um, these bolts are torqued to 72 to 80 foot-pounds, um, 72 to 80. Um, and you can see I have an aluminum flywheel. This is the Fidanza flywheel or Fidanza, not quite sure which. Um, and one thing to note is that it is actually very tight center bore right here if you get this one. Uh, because aluminum expands twice as fast as steel. So they make very tight tolerances in order to make sure that this is always balanced. Um, and then also it comes painted green on this surface uh, to keep, keep it from rusting because it is a steel. Um, so go ahead and remove that with some acetone. It came off really, really easy. Um, now we can go ahead and install our clutch. Uh, the clutch bolts are going to be uh, torqued down to, I think... 17 to 22 foot pounds. So I think I'm going to aim for about 20 um, and we'll see how that goes. All right, guys, we have our brand new clutch in now. Um, remember, this one is over 400 foot pounds of torque and over 400 horsepower, so we are super excited. Um, and that coupled with an aluminum lightweight flywheel, uh, this engine should be better than ever. Um, so, if you guys remember, when you go ahead and put this in, make sure you have your clutch alignment tool. Um, and now that that is in, we are all good to go ahead and put the transmission back in. Um, so, I'm not going to film any of that because it's literally just the reverse of everything that we've done. Um, but, you know, basic overview transmission in and then starter and then all like the clutch uh, this guy I've shoved him up over there the slave cylinder and then don't forget speedometer this grounding cable the mounts back here as well um, and then uh, downpipe and uh, drive shaft and uh, the e-brake and that is pretty much it um, so I hope you guys are super excited uh, just like I am for this brand new clutch and uh, if you guys have any questions about what I did definitely drop a comment down below um, check out the zgarage.net and the store tab for some new items we have coming up there soon and uh, I hope you guys like this so I'll see you guys next time